First of all, I had to figure out what to even call these things, so I took it to Instagram and not very unanimously, but slightly unanimously, it was decided that we call them bike shorts. Hi, it's Flippa. I see we all woke up today wondering the same thing. Can you make bike shorts faster than you can buy them? Correction, can I make bike shorts faster than I can buy them? And the answer is going to be answered later because if I said it now, you wouldn't be watching the video. So in order to find this out, I am going to perform two tests. Number one being me buying the shorts and I'm going to start the clock from me exiting the door to when I get back after I have bought the shorts. And number two is me making the shorts very much from scratch. I'm going to use an old pair of bike pants that I already had to make a pattern and then I'm going to cut it out and all the way until I make the last hem. Okay, so I kind of lied to you. I've already done the tests. Otherwise, I wouldn't be filming this intro. And I have to report an animality in test number one. Namely, I had to do the test two times because the first attempt was a complete failure. Okay, so I live in a relatively large city and I kind of live smack in the middle of it. And I live about five minutes walk from like the center which has a lot of stores very conveniently positioned like next to each other there are like these three malls so anyways i thought i would just walk down there five minutes and then maybe walk into like one store one or two stores and since it's i thought a very basic garment i thought i was gonna be able to find it almost immediately but apparently not because I ended up going into like every single store in all of those four malls. But even after all that effort, it was to no avail. I only found one pair of white bike shorts and they were not in my size. But a few days later, I was actually going to Stockholm. Not for this. I was on other important unofficial business. Um, which was shopping. So I just thought I could maybe take this opportunity to check if they have it. Maybe here and as you might have guessed i did find them there actually in the first store i walked into which is really annoying so actually already here realistically we could say that it did take several days for me to buy a pair of bike shorts i can confidently tell you that you definitely can make bike shorts faster than several days however i don't think it would be very fun and realistically i don't think that it would be this hard to find a pair of bike shorts if you live in a relatively big city so we're just gonna count attempt number two i do live kind of far from stockholm but i think it's kind of realistic because not everyone lives in a city and might have to travel kind of equally the amount of time that it took me so without further ado let's get into the test and we'll start off by making the shorts some things you will need an old thrifted t-shirt in stretch fabric uh most t-shirts are it needs to be big enough to fit your pattern pieces so evidently i forgot to take a before shot and here's the after but you will see later in the video how big it was and how the pieces fit in it's okay you can cry Next, you will need a pair of stretch shorts that you like to make a pattern out of. Optionally, you can copy my pattern as I will write down what measurements you will need. This pair happened to have a gusset or this diamond shape, which is added wherever there's need of space. And I'm guessing since these bike shorts were quite sporty, it's for move ability, mobility. Also some pattern paper for your pattern, but any paper big enough works. Here are a heap of things you will need, like fabric scissor, paper scissor, scissor for cutting thread, needles, thread, seam ripper, unless you are a complete professional without error, but then why are you watching my not so swanky tutorial? A twin needle for stretch fabric. This is not entirely necessary, but gives the nicest look. This I'm going to use to make neat hems at the bottom of the legs. The bottom thread is zigzagged which works well with a stretchy fabric and doesn't snap as easily as a regular straight stitch would. So I forgot to hold up my elastic, this try hard artistically against the wall, but mine elastic was 1cm wide and it's about as long as your waist. No, mine was for my waist, obviously, I don't know your waist and I would never ask, it's impolite and frankly I don't care. You will also need a sewing machine and not at all necessarily, but if you have one, preferably obviously, use your overlock to sew all the seams. Otherwise, you can just use your regular sewing machine and use a zigzag or any type of stretch stitch. So before getting the going, I prepped everything before starting the timer. I winded my bobbin with thread, I already had a bobbin with white for the bottom thread. 
but this one is for the second thread of our twin needle. I basically thread them as if it was just one thread the entire way and then make sure to untwist them at the end and thread each one through their respective twin. Now we're done prepping so let's get down to making this pattern. So if you have a nice pair of shorts in stretch fabric you can trace them like I did, otherwise I'll include a clearer sketch also more properly done than the pattern I made with measurements included. Okay so starting with the front leg I laid it out as flat and straight as possible with the seams facing up as best as I could. Then I just traced the outskirts with a dashed line. I followed all the seams and tried my best to sketch around the gusset or diamond. Then I flipped it over and did the same for the back leg. Then I attempted checking the pattern by lining them up or on top of each other where they are going to be sewn together to make sure that they were of the same length. I ended up confusing myself and spending way too much time here. It is important of course to check a pattern and make sure you haven't made a huge yet at this stage very fixable mistake but we were on dire time. Then to make the gusset I measured the width of the middle and total length from the top of the diamond to the bottom. I also just measured to see if each I'm gonna call them legs top and bottom were of the same length and they were. Then I had to do some puzzling to fit that in. As you can see, I'm not very good at doing puzzles. I was about to jump into bed and never think of this again, but it's okay, I made it work. Of course, I forgot to add a few centimeters at the bottom of the legs for a hem and at the top of the shorts for the channel. So sadly, a little bit of this <coughs> ugly logo, I, <laughs> I think I did that wrong, had to be on one of the back legs, but I feel like that's the charm as well as the compromise with upcycled clothing. So to add a bit of seam allowance everywhere, I just cut the pieces out about 0 0.0 centimeters outside the actual pattern piece. So this wasn't, shall we say, precise. This is what you call eyeballing it, but if you have a weak eyeball or two, like you should probably wear glasses but you're reluctant and ready to live with the headaches that comes with watching TV or anything for a longer period of time, the outcome is so-so. Also my fabric scissors works about as well as paper scissors would, possibly because I've been using it to cut paper, which is in fact a registered sin somewhere. Okay so last minute adding for the channel I measured my elastic it was one centimeter and since this is stretch fabric no need to double hem or fold over twice once is enough. I added two centimeters just to make sure I really had enough room for the twin needle stitch without having to worry about sewing into the elastic. I was fine with there being a bit of room for the elastic in the channel. I added 1.5 centimeters for the hem at the bottom of the leg. Well, obviously I added 2 centimeters to the top of the back leg as well. In order to cut out the gusset, I first checked in which direction it had the most stretch and I think it went along the top and bottom of the diamond, so I cut it out the same way on my fabric. Also adding about 0 0.0 centimeters all the way around. So I'm going to sew most of this on my overlock slash serger but if you don't have one because honestly who does i picked mine up at a supermarket actually which sounds super sketchy and it was but it works it doesn't work well but it works sometimes but anyways if you don't have one you can just use a zigzag stitch or any other type of stretch stitch on your regular machine now i am terribly sorry about these horrific angles this one isn't even showing the fabric actually getting surged so basically it's useless i did figure it out later though like i said i was super stressed and i just tried to slam the camera wherever and i didn't think it would come out this complete garbage she in order to illustrate better what I was doing, here are some illustrations made in Illustrator. So first I sewed the two front pieces together and then the two back pieces together right down the middle, stopping by the end of the slope or crotch. This is where I realized I had been filming absolutely nothing. 
So then you should have one whole front piece and one whole back piece. Next we sew the two pieces together at the two sides. So now we have one piece, then I mark the corners of the gusset with a pen, ideally use something that goes away in the wash. Now I matched up the little mark with the crotch seam starting by pinning along one side as far as the gusset went. And sewed it in place. Then did the same for the other side. And this is the final result with the gusset in place. Next it was time to make a channel and add elastic, so I conveniently already had a piece of elastic that fit comfortably around my waist, but you would probably need to cut one to your liking. So just pin it around your waist and wear it for a bit, try it sitting down as well so that you know it's comfortable. Before cutting remember to add 2 to 3 cm seam allowance that we're going to zigzag shut. So my dumbass forgot that I had to zigzag the elastic shut on my machine before swapping to the twin needle. Very fortunately I do live with another hobby seamstress and I got to loan her machine. I didn't film it because she was observing so here's a reenactment on my machine filmed after. This is how it turned out, did a few stitches back and forth and it's not that neat looking because the machines or maybe the needles don't really like sewing into two layers of elastic. But then to make the channel, here I am sloppily folding the fabric over the elastic and just adding about as much as a twin needle space and surplus. It was a bit tough pinning into the elastic so I did it willy nilly. The more thorough the better the result for sure, uh, like with most things. Lastly, I needed to hem the bottom of each leg, so I folded in 1.5 cm and pinned. And sewed it down along the edge. I had to fix some ugly parts at the top, but other than that, we are finished. Oh, I finally did it. And I'm exhausted. Also, I'm sorry about my panda eyes. This makeup's been on for like, I wanna say 20 hours, but that's not, it's like 10 hours. So it took me exactly And um, it's very late. It's not even that late. I'm just cranky and I have to eat now and cook something. So I didn't end up cooking something, I just microwaved one of those frozen pizzas. I'm sure it includes everything you need from a meal. I think it was a vegetarian bacon broccoli, solid 7 out of 10. So then I got back to my cozy everyday life, re-watching The Vampire Diaries. I'm actually just hanging out, so... Oh, one second. Also, don't worry about my posture, I'm a professional bed eater professional enough to wear a hoodie I already have a bunch of stains on so it's not as big of a deal. Now let's get right into our second test, buying the shorts and we've just arrived in Stockholm because I completely forgot to film the walk to and the ride on the train. Okay so we've arrived in Stockholm so I'm... Okay so we've arrived in Stockholm and I've already staked up two places that are supposed to have it in white and in my size. So I'm just gonna go to the closest one first, hoping I don't have to go to the other one because it's quite far. I'm sorry about these over flattering angles. As you can tell, I am just so comfortable filming and overall existing in public.
so I was heading straight to that store in which I found the white bike shorts before but in the wrong size, hoping this time it wouldn't be such a colossal disappointment. Sadly I do know my way around Stockholm pretty well and the walk there was only 5 minutes and very swiftly did I find dun -dun -dun -dun, white bike shorts and one pair even in my size, though they were trying to trick me. The line was unexpectedly long, there was a membership sign up thing going on that took forever. I would know because you bet your bottom dollar I also joined for the whole 10% discount and further stalled the almost to the door long queue. Okay so I'm back at the station, um, but unfortunately there are like 15 minutes left until the train actually leaves, but it's just rolled in and I think it counts as realistic so I'm gonna start the timer again. Chose to be boring and gone on even though there's a bunch of stuff you can do at the station. Actually, that was a lie. I bought these sunglasses at the station. But I really had to charge my phone to buy a ticket, so just waiting 30 minutes. Then finally the train rolled off into the sunset. And I only filmed this little part because the girl next to me kept peeping over my shoulder. So then I got home and also I wanted to show you this, not sure if it's greenwashing or not, I'm gonna have to do some more research, but I hope not. So here they are up close. I'm terribly sorry if some loud and obnoxious music is playing in the background of some of these clips. My equally loud and obnoxious upstairs neighbor is having a party, obviously by himself. And here they are on me. Okay, so I'm wearing the shorts that I made and right off the bat, they're not my best work but I think understandably because I was so rest when I was doing this I kind of felt like I was on Project Runway except they make extravagant creations and I just made subpar bike shorts out of an old t-shirt Not to put myself down or anything because I mean, they're perfectly adequate they're pretty comfortable. The only thing I have to complain is that they are way too low-waisted for my taste. I think it is because the original pants were kind of low-waisted and then adding the fact that I forgot to add some seam allowance for the channel. There are also some seams that aren't very straight. But other than that, um, I'm pretty happy like they're doing their job. They're really comfortable and like sits pretty well. Maybe a little bit awkward in the cross area, but what shorts aren't? I'm pretty happy, like, it's definitely time that I feel like I can spend on making something simple like this. Okay, so now I'm wearing the store-bought ones, and they're definitely a lot more high waist and a lot less awkward in the crotch area, I think, as well. But yeah, so these don't have, like, the triangle part, and I thought that maybe it would make them less comfortable which I'm not sure, but they're, they're definitely very stretchy as well. I don't think it's about the triangle though, I think it's just because I didn't put enough attention into making the pattern correctly. But both definitely get the job done. The homemade ones were definitely cheaper, and did they take less time? And now, the moment we've all been waiting for. Except y'all impatient people who skipped to the end before watching the whole thing. Uh, much like I would have done. Finally, the results. Okay, so the results are in. And it was faster to make the pants than mine. Now, obviously, you can discuss this a little bit. Like, if I had succeeded on my first attempt, then definitely it would have been faster to just buy the shorts. However, this is life and maybe it's a bit realistic that you wouldn't find them on the first attempt and that you would have to go to some other city or something like that or maybe wait a bit. So just in that case, then it is faster to make them actually. So just the, like going into a store, finding something and then buying it definitely doesn't take that long. But I also feel like it is realistic to just not find everything instantly like this. And also a lot of people don't live in big cities and maybe have a long travel time like I did the second time. So yeah, you could do the tests again, but I think it's perfectly fine to just do these two. Actually, it was three, so I did do the first test twice. But if you want a pair of shorts, obviously there's also the factor of quality and not just the time. 
So I did prefer the bought ones, but the ones that I made were definitely not bad or anything. And if I did have more time, I would have had time to make them a bit better as well. So for the next time, I'll probably be quicker since I know how to do them now and I can spend some more time on the pattern and <laughs> also the hemming. That was really, really bad. So that was it. Thank you so much for watching. And also, if you want a video on how to like make these shorts a bit more properly, um, comment down below and maybe I will do that sometime in the future. I'm currently working on something else. Hopefully it will be out this year. Mm, bye.